I'm Harry Westwood. Um, I'm the first person in my family to have Anoridia. Two years ago at the Anoridia conference in Bristol, I spoke about growing up with Anoridia, and I'm here to update that story. Last year, I flew, flew the nest and started studying engineering at the University of Birmingham. This brief presentation describes my preparation and my experiences. I had always planned on going to university, and for as long as I can remember, I wanted to study science. I considered several universities and went to a, to a few open days, including Bristol, Exeter, and Birmingham. I received several offers from good universities. I chose the University of Birmingham for several reasons. It is a campus university, meaning all of the buildings are located in one place. As a result, my lectures are in buildings that are all close together, and there are no roads to worry about, making it easier to get between lectures. The university has good transport links, both by road and rail. In fact, the university has its own train station on a direct line to the closest station to my home. Having chosen my preferred university, it was just a matter of knocking down, revising, and enduring seemingly endless exams. There were several occasions where I would sit in an empty classroom with just a sad invigilator of company late into the afternoon, hours after my peers had already gone home, while I took the additional time that I was allowed because of my anorexia. With the exams behind me, while waiting for results day to seal my fate, I could then start to prepare to leave home and become more independent. I had to think both about the things I needed to know just to survive away from home, and also the specific things I needed to have in place um, to make studying easier and give me the best chance for success. To prepare for leaving home, I considered that not starving was a high priority, <laughs> so having the ability to rustle up an edible meal seemed to be a good thing to become proficient at. We bought all the utensils I would be taking to university and marked them up with colour tape so I could easily identify what was mine. I practiced using these utensils to get used to them. Practicing it allowed me to learn some new basic dishes that I would be able to make until I felt confident enough to explore new recipes on my own. As part of preparing to study university, I sourced out my disability student allowance known as DSA. DSA provides three different types of support, specialist equipment, helper assistance, and another small fund from which permitted expenses can be claimed. To prove eligibility of DSA, I had to show I was in receipt of disability living allowance, known as DLA, but I also needed to get a letter from my doctor that provided evidence that I was eligible. To establish the equipment I should have, I arranged for a needs assessment, and met with an assessor to discuss the sort of equipment that would be useful, for example, a dictaphone to record lectures. I ended up with a dictaphone, a handheld magnifier, a reader that converted printed text to audio, a coloured ink printer scanner, a monitor, as well as various bits of software to go onto a laptop I already owned. It took roughly two months from being assessed to when the equipment was delivered, but the assessment was delayed as a result of not receiving the doctor's letter for three months, despite several prompts. My equipment arrived in November, so I would recommend that if you're going to apply for DSA, start the application process in April and don't forget to reapply each year. After being accepted to the University of Birmingham, I was then able to make more specific preparations. I emailed the University's Disability and Learning Support Service via an email address on their website. Once I had given them proof of my disability and completed their questionnaire to identify the sort of help I needed, I was assigned a disability advisor who worked at the University. She sent me a student support advice document, which described all of the support I would have in place when I arrived at the University. The support included extra time in tests and exams, and having lecture handouts and large. The support also covered checking that relevant buildings were accessible to me. I was also put in contact with a company who would, be, who would also be able to supply me with a lab system and a library system, sure I need them, but I haven't yet. I picked Paul. I picked all the residents close to the university, so I don't, didn't have to worry about public transport and intricate city navigation. I let them know that I was visually impaired when I applied, requesting and then being allocated a ground floor flat. Having informed them that I was disabled meant that I was allowed to move in a day before any of the other students. It helped too that the accommodation was reasonably priced. 
<laughs> During the summer holiday, my family and I visited the university while it was quiet and walked around the campus to find the main buildings where my lectures and labs would take place. This was helpful as it was more tailored to the main places I'd go compared to the general campus tours during specials week. When it came to leave home, I hadn't received any DSA equipment and my cooking skills left, left much room for improvement, which added slightly to my concern as I still didn't feel confident that I was completely self-reliant. For, ex for example, using public transport has always been stressful for me. I've only recently started using trains on my own, but I've been taking buses by myself for a couple of years. I recently plan any journey that I haven't done before, and I always have the relevant timetables with me. When I'm, going, when I'm going to walk somewhere new, I use Google Street View to check the route beforehand. When I arrived in university, I had a week to familiarise myself with my new surroundings, which enabled me to get used to living away from home without worrying about lectures. I had worried that food shopping would be much harder than it actually was. Sure, the first few times I went around the local shops, it took a while to find what I was looking for. In ret retrospect, I could have saved a lot of time if I had asked the staff for help. However, I still don't like bothering other people with my problems. During my first week, I spent 30 minutes looking for bin bags, but as a result, I had a much better understanding of where everything else was. <laughs> and after that, I'd memorized where all the, all the stuff I needed was, meaning I was able to do a whole shop in two or three minutes. When it came to cooking, I couldn't remember all the recipes I practiced, but I soon discovered that the local shops stocked a wide variety of ready meals to augment the small range of culinary delights that I was confident preparing. Since Freshers' Week, I have tried various recipes from the internet and have slowly phased out ready meals. When Freshers' Week drew to a close, it didn't take long to feel confident that I could survive and enjoy my independence. Once lectures began, I quickly realised that the vast majority of the staff I encountered were very supportive. They were very good at offering help and made me feel comfortable, comfortable to suggest ways in which they could do better. The best of all was that the staff were reliable and did what they said they would. I didn't have to take extensive notes of lectures because the presentation slides and handouts were put online. Most lectures were recorded and uploaded as well. This meant that I, that I hadn't needed to use my data phone. I suspect that DSA equipment will be more useful later in my course when reading lengthy textbooks at 3am by magnifier light becomes the norm. Now, at the end of my first year away from home, looking back, I can see how much I have developed. I am more self-reliant and I enjoy being independent. After overcoming the challenges that, that face everyone leaving home for the first time, there is now very little that worries me. For the most part, I now understand from my experiences over the last year that with sufficient planning, there is nothing for me to fear.